The reality of food self-sufficiency looks so different than the common perception. We have been working so hard to be able to accomplish our goals of growing as much of our own food as possible. And I'm super excited to share with you some of the reality of our lives. They're quickly outgrowing their brewer box. We need to put them in a bigger facility. So I had a friend that converted a old carport into a chicken a portable chicken tractor so we're going to kind of use his same concept to to make a turkey tractor this and like you know fold it up around this box I grow a lot of cover crops in the garden to build and enrich soil life and health. When they start to flower, we crimp them down and then cover them with tarps to get them to die before planting our main vegetable crops in them. So we use a homemade crimping tool and each year it ends up being something a little bit different. This year, Cam just found this metal pole that we used to crimp the crop down and last year we used a t-post with the string so crimping down cover crops works better the more weight that you have on it so that's why cam and i tag team this job it's always a little tricky to get going at first because you need to be coordinated and then synchronize your steps kind of like you're doing a dance It has been nine days since we laid down the tarps. I just checked the other day and the cover crop underneath is brown, which means it's ready for the tarps to come off. So we're gonna fold them up and then kind of let everything dry out for a day and then we will plant tomorrow. It is May 19th and it is the day I am planting tomatoes. I'm hoping to get to my peppers today if I have enough time, but definitely the tomatoes. I have over a hundred tomatoes. The kids took some and planted some in their gardens. So I have mostly paste tomatoes to plant in the family garden. It is three weeks past our average last frost right now. I prefer to wait a little bit to plant mine just because we have so much heavy rain in our area. We also often get hailstorms and it's really damaging to the plants. They just don't like it. I also live in the south so I have the luxury of being able to plant them a little bit later if I need to. We have a longer growing season so I can do that. Uh, but also I was waiting for my cover crops to uh, kind of die off under those tarps. So everything is all prepped and ready to go and we're gonna plant today. When I plant my tomatoes, I really don't do too much at planting time, especially because I've started out with this cover crop already, which adds a lot of nutrients to the soil, and I'm planting directly into the residue of this crop.
So I'm planting corn today and it's raining <laughs> right now. It will not stop raining. So I'm just gonna be working in the rain. This heavy cover crop behind me was the winter rye, hairy vetch, and crimson clover. It's a very heavy mulch. It's gonna be difficult to direct seed in. So what I'm planning on doing is kind of pushing that mulch to the side so I can have a place for my cedar to go down the row. And I'm also planning on putting some compost down so that there is a place for that corn to germinate and enough soil there for it to germinate. And then in these other two rows, these were peas and oats. They break down super fast and there's a lot less uh, material there. So they'll be easy to direct sow into. When you're wearing boots and the non-waterproof stuff gets wet, that soaks down in your boot. So now my boot soaks. It has been raining literally for three days straight. And the sun is finally out. I picked a good day to come out. I thought I was gonna be working in the rain and then it just all cleared up, which is pretty magical. And this <laughs> experiment that I'm doing, I have no idea if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna keep going on this and go all the way down the row and see how much I can get done today because the weather is nice. Noel and Dax planted a garden bed of corn for me this morning. They planted the one with all of the mulch on it. I was really afraid my earthway cedar would not make it through all of that mulch. So they just hand planted that. And the other two rows where I had my pea and oat cover crop and it just really died back, I will be able to take my earthway cedar through that. Hopefully it'll germinate now that it's finally warmed up and stop raining. clean surface. What about raining outside today and so we decided to take the day and do our first canning of the season. We have strawberries this year and so we're cutting those up and we're gonna make lemon strawberry jam which is our very favorite. Just a very small batch right now because I only have a couple strawberries. major major issue in the garden I was so distraught and overcome I did not video any of this I could not pull out the camera I didn't want to share any of it but I feel like today I'm in a better place and I can share this with you so hopefully we can all learn together I definitely learned my lesson so yesterday I came out to my tomatoes and a lot of them were flopping over like really droopy 
and not like they hadn't been watered. It had it had rained for four or five days straight. And I was like, I think they are too wet. So I put my hand down in the soil and down in the soil, it was like they were sitting in a pool of water. The soil was just not draining. Previously, when I created this garden, all of the beds were mounted up and raised. And over the last three years that we've done this garden, they have sort of leveled out. And I thought it would be fine, but it wasn't fine. So for four or five days, the tomatoes were just sitting in water. and it was obvious now how distressed they were i was i was just so devastated you put so much work into the garden and all of this i was like i don't even know what to do so i pulled up this tomato just so it would dry out and then the idea came like i just need to raise the soil level so i took a bunch of compost and cameron helped me move compost over here and we took each tomato dug it up and replanted it above ground level with a lot of compost around it so that they weren't sitting in water anymore. Some of them, it looks like they are not going to recover, but others are perking up today, which is really good. So we're still gonna get a tomato harvest this year. The kids' gardens, their tomatoes look amazing because they're, uh, they still have this wonderful raised bed. We'll see how this all pans out. I was like so excited about the tomatoes this year. They were looking so good and uh, I had done a better job than usual growing them in pots and yeah. So it went from like major high to major low. Taking all of this into account, now that I know the drainage is absolutely horrible, uh, if the beds level out in at the end of this year, I am going to take the dirt from the aisles and put that up on the beds so that they raise are raised back up again.